Hello, good morning everyone, and I uh, hope you're having a great morning so far. I got to enjoy the sunrise and play with my dog this morning, so I hope um, you're able to wake up early and uh, start your day off strong in John. So we're going to dive right in today. Um, I've been going over the five minute mark, so we're going to try not to do that anymore. We'll see. Nobody's complained about it so far, so that's also good. All right, John chapter 3. We went over the famous John 3.16 yesterday, and now we're diving into John chapter 3, verse 22. John chapter 3, verse 22 says, After this, after his conversation with Nicodemus, after this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing at Anon near Salem. I don't know exactly where that is, <laughs> because there was plenty of water there. And people were constantly coming to be baptized. Now, that's John the Baptist, not John the author. Um, but people were constantly coming to be, to be baptized. This was before John was put into prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. Isn't that interesting that people's lives were being changed and they were being baptized and there was an argument there? Does that sound familiar to any church experience? Anyways, uh, verse 26 says, They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, well, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him instead. To this, John replied, A man can receive only what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine, and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. In other words, he must increase. I must decrease. That's one of my favorite short verses in the Bible, um, John chapter 3, verse 30. And I know plenty of people that have that on their cars. I know plenty of people that have that tattooed on themselves or written on a note in their um, Bibles or something like that. He must increase, I must decrease. Now, since because it's a little bit shorter of a, of a, a passage, we can talk about it a little bit longer. So um, a little bit of background there. Jesus started baptizing while John the Baptist was baptizing. So an interesting point there is that Jesus did not expect John to stop his work once he started working. Jesus does not expect us to stop working. Instead, he wants us to continue and maybe even do more so. So don't let other people's arguments, don't let other people's opinions, don't let other people's criticisms stop you from working the calling in your life that Jesus has called you to. That's something to get out of here. John did not quit working when Jesus came on the scene. Now, the other part is he must become greater, I must become less. This is the crux of being a follower of Jesus. We have to follow. We have to submit. We have to show God that he is more important to us than ourselves. He must increase, I must decrease. So I've got to ask you this morning, how is that playing out in your life? Are you humbled to God's Holy Spirit and leadership in your life? Or do you feel that you know better? Do you feel that you've got it all figured out? Do you feel like your plan is the best? I can tell you from personal experience, I do. <laughs> There's been many a times in my life where I say, God, this is my plan. Help me make it happen. You do your work so that my plan takes place. You do your work because I have a good feeling about this. I, I, I feel like I know better than you do. He must increase, I must decrease. That's hard. That's a hard place to get to. But I promise, once you do, once you give Jesus the lead, once you give him control, it's difficult to do, but once you do, he changes your life, he makes your path straight, he changes your mindset about you, about yourself, about your situations. 
Jesus is better. And we let him increase. We allow him to be the Lord and Savior of our lives because we realize that we can't do it ourselves. So what's God asking you to decrease in today? Uh, From personal experience, God is asking me to decrease having things go my way. That's my personal inclination. That's my my desire in my life underneath the surface of it all. I'm not the perfect person. I'm not a great Christian or anything. I very often am like, God, I got to have this my way. Let this move go my way. Let this job go my way. Let this talk go my my way. Let this relationship go my way. And I can promise you every time God has stepped back and let me have things go my way, they've not been very good. And so we bring glory to God and we show God that we love him the way he loves us when we sacrifice our desires, our hearts, our lives to Jesus and we say, God, your way is better. Your thoughts are higher. You must increase. I must decrease. Can you come to that conclusion today? Can you come to the point in your life where you say, Jesus must become greater and I must become less. If so, that's awesome. It's going to change your life. It's going to be great. I'd love to hear about it. Let me know how God changes things, because He will. But if not, why not? What hinders you? What stops you? What, what, what gives you the hesitation to let God take control? I'd love to hear about that too. I'd love to talk you through it, because that's happened a lot in my life. And I'd love to help you out with that and answer some questions. So, he must increase, I must decrease. How do we make that happen in our life? Thanks for watching, guys.